Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary in Northboro. Uh, for those of you who haven't watched the show, my name is Arthur Bergeron. I'm an elder law attorney. I work at Myrick O'Connell. I do nothing but elder law. The point of these shows is really to supplement seminars that I do here in Northboro and other places in which we're focusing more about legal issues. The point of the show, though, is to be having you understand as a senior what it is, who the people are that you need to know, and what the programs are that you need to know about here in Northboro. Because we're really talking about my friends Frank and Mary here in Northboro, who, as you know, if you've gone to one of my seminars, their goal in life is they want to live in their house until they die. They want to be buried in the backyard, <laughs> which means they want to stay in their community. And the question how, is how can they do that? So you've seen some of these folks before. They've all been here before. Chris Linquist from the library. Um, Carol DiRienzo, who is, r runs Solace. Is it Our so Innovations. So I will always get that wrong. Solace <laughs> and, re and Renovations, who's he lives, uh, resident here in, in uh, Northboro. Absolutely. Past president of the of Baypath Elder, Elder Services, Service. an active person. Uh, Tammy Pazaricki, you've met before, who has for many years been doing Pleasantries Adult Day, which is the, the, the all day adult day program run out of Marlboro, where some of my relatives have gone. Very good. And um, I live in Northboro. And she lives in Northboro. Yay, no. um, Yay. So we, and, but we're going to talk about a couple of things that I think would really be of interest to you. One, which we kind of promoted early on, but it's really kind of developed now, and that's the wonderful memory cafe that is happening here in Northboro. And then, because it's happening at the library, we asked Chris to come on True. to also talk about some of the other things that are happening here in Northboro. That's Northbrook. a good idea. How's that? Now, I'm going to tell you ahead of time. This is, so this is local TV, right? So there's a fly in the street. <laughs> so at some point, if you see one of us go, we don't have a tick, we're trying to kill the fly, okay? So now that we've got that off, right? Now that's all said in, right? Would, would uh, it be a good idea for me to just uh, introduce what a memory cafe yes, is? Yes, talk about, yes. Because okay. one of the interesting things about Tammy, besides being a Northboro resident, which I know is in itself a big deal, is that she actually created the first memory cafe here in Massachusetts a number of years ago. There are now about 85, 85 of them. Yeah. So talk about memory cafes and conceptually what, what they're about, what they're so supposed to So memory cafes were started in Europe and um, a Dr. Lockvig brought it to New Mexico and started the first one in 2008. Mm. Um, a family member uh, told me about it and basically it's the creation of a, a supportive atmosphere, welcoming environment for caregivers and their loved ones who have some sort of memory impairment. Um, there's refreshments, there's entertainment, sometimes there's projects like art projects, there's pet therapy, art therapy, you name it, they're all different, they're all unique, um, but the main thing is that the disease process of Alzheimer's or other dementia diseases cause the person with it and their family member to isolate and withdraw. Because they're embarrassed right. about being out in the public. And yeah. now with a memory yeah. cafe, guess what? They're relating to everyone there. So they're getting out. We actually have a lot of folks who now we call cafe hoppers because they attend a lot in yeah. one month. Yeah. So Carol has uh, started the Apple Cafe. And by, and by the way, I just want to go back to, 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 to Tammy's for a second. And your experience with this was you started it and the first time, and I think several times thereafter, no one was there. Oh, no, it was me, my volunteer, the food, and the entertainment. And the entertainment. There it <laughs> yeah, was. Yeah, that was fun. No, no, people. no people. No people. And it took a long time to catch on yeah. because the concept, nobody knew about right. the concept. And, and a long time meaning? Like, I would say six months until we got our first maybe four people. Four people. And right. after, I would say, a good year, um, the other towns started yeah. hearing about it yeah. and they started developing these mm -hmm. and here we are. That was 2011 right. that I started the first one. So yeah. seven years later, mm -hmm. 85 in Massachusetts. Wow. Right. And, and yours does, you see, you Mine have a memory the, cafe yes, that still runs. Yes, it's the fourth it's, Sunday of each month and at and Pleasantries and Adult. And typically program. how many people come? 20. 20. Mm -hmm. So with that in mind. Yes. So let's talk about the two, the two of you and how you decided to do this, and Carol, sure. how you decided to do this, and Chris, how sure. you decided that the library was going to suck it up and be the... Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, place, right? I, I really have to give Carol all credit um, because she was the inspiration. She's the energy and the enthusiasm behind it, and I just kind of go along for the ride because Carol, you know, he she came to me way. and <laughs> she pretty much said, 
we, you're familiar with the Memory Cafe? I wasn't really familiar with it, Arthur, yeah. so yeah. I have been educated over the past right. year. But who would know? I mean, unless you're right. in that community, exactly. who would know? Right? So, you know, Cafe, yes, but Memory Cafe, that was yeah. kind of an oxymoron. I didn't understand it. But now that I've seen it in action, I mean, I am a proponent, and, and I'm just, again, supporting Carol's vision. So we've been doing this for more than a year. About we celebrated a year our and a couple months now. So, and it's the second Tuesday of the... It, nope. I'm sorry. <laughs> the second <laughs> Monday. The second Monday. We, we, Except we in moved October it and November That's because right. the That's library right. is closed. So this coming October and November, it'll be the third Monday. Third Monday in that particular month. <laughs> and so talk about how you found out about it and, what, and how and why you got involved. Well, um, being a friend of Tammy's, you kind of just kind of absorb everything that she offers. <laughs> and so she was telling me about the memory so cafe. So you heard it, right. You heard I had heard about it through Tammy. Yeah. And I sat on one, in one of that she... Um, helps out in Sudbury mm -hmm. and I watched firsthand how somebody who is totally withdrawn come, come alive on. to music it was it was totally it just gave me the chills and I said I'd like to see this in Northborough because it just happened it happened that it happened that day mm -hmm. it happened and then we have another mutual friend Lisa who's a part of the yes. library who said how about the library it'd be something different in a yeah. different place and L Lisa who I just Lisa want to Bazarian Gardner. Gardner. Yes, <laughs> that's good. That was very good. And she she runs a day better. program. Yep. In she, does. she does. Oh, she yeah. does. She, she runs, runs day, day break, break at, thir at the Hudson, Hudson Senior Center. In Hudson. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we'll talk about that a little yeah. bit in a yeah. minute yeah. as well, day break program, because that's a wonderful adjunct to memory cafes. Mm -hmm. um, so we started slowly. We used, It used to be on a Wednesday, so right. to Chris's, um, right. it used to be on a Wednesday, and we yeah. were finding that that wasn't working, and we moved, and I, through your help, we raised some money, mm -hmm. which was able to support the cafe, pay for the entertainer, pay for the food, and we were able to move it to a Monday and offer lunch. Mm -hmm. And so oh, that great. has so been... So Yes, so it absolutely changes things. And we moved it to more midday, so it starts at 12.30 and ends at 2.30, yeah. which I yeah. seem to find to be the best time. Mm -hmm. It kind of breaks up the day. And yeah. um, our last cafe, we had Amy Podolsky, mm -hmm. if I got that right, yes. um, from Ageless Grace, and it was a hoot. And everybody <laughs> thoroughly enjoyed themselves. What and is Ageless Grace? Ageless Grace is a movement and music. And yeah. you, it's chair it's chair exercise, but yeah. you really work up a sweat. Yeah. And she had everybody laughing, and, and one of the... Actually, the president of the Friends had come to me and she said, yeah, we heard you. <laughs> I actually just scheduled her for the October Sudbury Senior oh, Cafe. Oh, I yeah. told her she would be coming yeah. to Sudbury <laughs> soon. So, um, um, so that's wonderful. She, she was very engaging and, and a wonderful um, going forward in October on the third Monday right. because the library is <laughs> closed. October. We have the wonderful program called Meet Me at the Movies. Meet me at oh, the movies. Oh, you do. Is, That's um, wonderful. Eric Kessler from Hearthstone has agreed to come and put it on, and it's a wonderful program showing older clips, mm -hmm. movie clips, and discussion about it, and um, mm -hmm. making memories with movies. And when we're you say also older clips, this would be before my, <laughs> my, my, <laughs> my time. Yeah, your time. <laughs> Our we're time. World War II. We're man. talking <laughs> singing in the rain. Yeah, yeah. my time. We're talking, yes. I, I know I singing. Know I can okay. name all the movies that they do. Uh, right? The last scene from Castle There you go. There you go. It's always been a bit. Somewhere Over the Rainbow right. is always in there. I got it. But, um, <laughs> so so. To, to go back to the Memory Cafe, though, so this is, this is, this is a, a, a cafe for folks with dementia and their caregivers. With yes. dementia and other, and other. brain and, oh, injuries. Yeah, yeah. We've, we haven't so, been it up yeah. to... Um, but, it, but it's also and their caregivers. And so their it's, caregivers, So it's yes. not, this is it's not, not a day you're dropping program, somebody right. off, exactly. mm -hmm. and then, and then you're, you're leaving. It's like, oh. you, because, because, but I, the reason why I mention that is, I, I know I've heard from the both of you, that ends up being a really positive thing for the caregivers. Absolutely. Because you're like bonding with some with of the other, other caregivers. Uh, exactly. Because it's just been my experience with, you know, so much of this stuff mm -hmm. and so much of dealing with folks who have dementia, it's not, this is not rocket science, but it's about having face situ how to deal with a particular situation or a person that you, that who, is, who is your loved one mm -hmm. who is acting a particular way at a particular time and you're saying, what do I do? Mm -hmm. right. And the notion, and, and so other caregivers may have bumped into it. Absolutely. They may have bumped into it. And so, they can have that communication right. and share their coping skills and how they help their loved one. And mm -hmm. you know, um, the more education that goes out there, the more helpful tips that go out there, the better for anybody mm -hmm. who is living with dementia and their I, caregiver. 
I wanted to mention a book yep. by Dr. Lockvig, The Alzheimer's Cafe. Mm -hmm. Spell doc, spell it. It's uh, Dr. Lockvig, L-O-K-V-I-G. And The Alzheimer's Cafe, she wrote it because she knew people needed guidance in how yeah. to do this. Right. Um, but it doesn't take rocket science. It's it's easy. It's not it, it's, it's not that difficult. It's it just really passion. Mm -hmm. I think that's right. all exactly. dedication and passion. Exactly. And, exactly. And, and there's now a whole society of people who are just talking to each other about how to do it, right? That's well, there's the, the, percolator the percolator group in Waltham, you, you, and then Tammy and I have also started the Metro West um, Cafe group. And what is that? Because um, it's funny how one thing one Well, thing the percolator means. group is the big group of all 80 people, are in, all 85 or however many cafes yeah. there are now, um, are invited to go. And again, um, she has speakers uh, from cafes or from other people who right. come this and talk this, about This is this wonderful this woman is from, Beth from Salzburg, Waltham. From, Beth Salzburg. Um, mm -hmm. Jewish Family, family and, children. and Children Services. I have right. to stop and think of that one. <laughs> great, um, great. And she's a wonderful supporter of anybody who wants to start a cafe. Right. She's really, mm -hmm. she and Tammy, I think, are the two out there. Yeah, and she um, was inspirational in terms of getting people together that absolutely, way. Absolutely. Also, share support, as we should say, supported by, isn't that the, by the Tufts? Um, is that the Tusk Foundation? I think. It could be. I think, yeah, they've been tremendously supportive about in, in, in this whole movement, right? So but then you guys started a separate, another yeah, group. Yeah, because what we found was... It's not a splinter. No, it's not. It's not. A, it, no. It's, it's, we're still part of the, for, of the percolator. It's yeah. just that it's very hard to get to Waltham sometimes. Um, and we, you can Skype, but sometimes we can, you know, you're and in a business meeting and you can't quite do that either. I think we wanted to make sure that the ones in our Metro West area right. weren't competing, mm -hmm. that we gave caregivers an opportunity to come at different days and times. That's very important. And voila, it's happening. Right. Plus we're supporting each other's. Right. And we're brainstorming and we're right. problem solving. And actually, isn't it true now that you can pretty much go from Monday through Sunday. The Sunday, mm. yes. If you wanted to travel to local uh, memory cafes, you can. Which is the reason I guess we chose Monday. Right, we, we backed up to it. Monday, and um, yes, you can. You can go probably one every day of the week, and then you also have Daybreak, which is another yeah. program. And, and I wanted to talk about that for, in a few, in, because it's it's so connected to this having something every day. But just but finally, so how much does it cost? Nothing. And there's no RSVP it, because right. it anybody costs nothing who because has, you've gotten some contributors. Yes, right. I've been very fortunate, and that's the and, and that is the key. And I think supported. and I'm also we're all going to we're also going to mention that because you know it doesn't cost a lot to run a memory cafe, but it doesn't cost nothing, right? Because right. right. you're talking about food and you're talking about entertainers and stuff. So I know I know we did a solicitation, we right? Did. To a set of players who contributed, and I know, and they were and, very and, generous. And, and, and Mark O'Connell's yes, contributed, and absolutely. a number of others ha others have. But it doesn't cost a lot, but and it's not costing the town doesn't anything. Doesn't cost the town anything, right? anything or so the really people important. who come anything. So now, can you just talk a little bit about a, a, the, the the day programs? Because I know I know Kelly has been here, and we've talked about the day program. But talk about hmm. from your own perspective how it's connected to this. Well, right? Daybreak started in Hudson with Lisa and um, Janice, and it's a program that goes from 11:30 to 2:30. 1.30 to 2.30? Yes. 11.30 to 2.30. I think it's 11, it's three hours. It's, right, so it's a three yeah. hour segment in the middle of the day. Includes lunch. Um, includes includes lunch. lunch, and you are able to drop off your loved one, and that way you can go food shopping, get your hair done, go to the doctors, Take whatever. Take a nap. Take right, a nap. anything that that yeah. caregiver needs, and your loved one is cared for, fed, and has socialization with other people. Right. Um, all important. Um, Lisa started it, Janice went for a grant, and they got a grant to expand it. So on t Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So Thursday is Hudson, Wednesday is Northborough, and Tuesday is Marlboro. I, I believe think. it's, yeah. yeah. I think, I it's think Monday, that's Monday, Tuesday, that. Wednesday. I know, I know <laughs> Thursday right. is Hudson, and I'm pretty sure Monday and Tuesday are Northborough and, and Marlboro. But if folks wanted to call the senior center, they could get that's all that information. Call. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's, and I'm just going to mention one thing, which is kind of as an add-on to that, which is I know now from talking to Shelby Marshall, who's a selectman in Westboro, hmm. who is very interested in this. I think they may be very interested in doing the same thing, Another trying to make Wonderful. it, trying to make it for communities, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and also um, in Ashland, where they got a actually they got a special um, that they, they whose state senator happens to be the Senate president got a special <laughs> chunk of money oh. in this budget thirty thousand wow. dollars to develop. Um, programs that they feel are appropriate that are dementia friendly. Oh, wonderful. And one of the things that they're looking at is doing exactly this, doing a day program, 
but they're also talking about emulating the model that was that you guys used that was used here among the three communities with Marlboro, Northbury, and Hudson. Mm -hmm. And they're looking at talking about talking maybe to Natick or to Hollis and to communities right there. Wonderful. Same goal, so that if you're if you're at home and you're a caregiver, you have this ability to say, today we're going to go to you a. know a to to Marlboro, and then we're you know, tomorrow we're going to go to no so so that. And so that if you're the folk, the person with dementia, you can really be kind of looking forward to this, and it's not boring because you're seeing a new different set of things people every night. Right. So it's really, it's really it interesting. It's really interesting. That's wonderful. So this wonderful is great, and what you're doing is terrific. Thank you. You know, and it's it's great, and, and you know, and the money shows up, right? Money follows good ideas. You've always right? said that. <laughs> speaking, speaking of which, so Chris, can, yes. can, can, can you just sure? You've been so supportive of this. Yeah. Why were you Incredibly supportive good. of this? Well, you know, it's interesting. How does it fit into what else you're doing? I appreciate the question, Arthur. And how much do you need? Because well, I've heard that <laughs> no, we'll get there. Trust me, we'll get there. But libraries yeah. now are, are community centers. I mean, yeah. we're kind of transitioning. You know, we've been repositories for books and materials, and, and we're still doing that. A very but we're important more, role before we're the more community internet. centers now, and 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 socialization and meeting people. You know, your friends and and caregivers, and, yeah. and having people be able to get to in, into a safe, uh, supportive environment, which is the library. That's part of our mission. So right. it was a natural kind of connection, and you know, we're just thrilled to be part of it. Um, we provide the space. Carol does the rest. I mean, you know, I support that, but I mean, it's really Carol. But it's a beautiful space. It's a great space. Have it's convenient. And your friends accessible. group has been really the friends supportive. group is exceptionally supportive. Um, you know, you get uh, artists and entertainers, musicians. Some of them, they donate their time. Yes. And, and others, it's for a nominal fee. And, and I think um, Lowe's is also providing food. Lowe's has been wonderful. And Lowe's so, variety yeah, for those who know Tommy really, Lowe's. Yeah, he's like a signature. Yeah, yeah. Tommy Lowe's. <laughs> yeah. So, 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 so it's does really just a great partnership uh, among many players. And, and so the library, you know, is glad to, you know, we provide information as well, obviously. We're an yeah. information resource. And by the way, if you go to these memory cafes, Carol has all of this information out on the table. There's so many resources in the local community, in the state, federal, yeah. and we have information. Oh, that's great. That if people want referrals, there's so much information. Yeah. Some of it's yeah. online, but some of it's in print. And so, I mean, that's our mission as well. And so if people want us to help them, you know, with whatever their yeah. information need is, we're, we're there to help as well. But, but so by the way, so, so for example, Tammy just mentioned a book. Yep, we can. We, you know, if that book isn't <laughs> there, could you get that book? We can get that from any of our libraries within our network, out right. of network, we can get it within a few days. I mean, absolutely. So that's, you yeah. know, again, that's part of our role in this. Um, you know, we also are supporting uh, people in the community. We're doing an outreach service now. We, we've gotten a I was grant. Going to talk about so that. So we've a gotten little. a grant from the Board of Library Commissioners, which is the governing agency for libraries in Massachusetts, yeah. and it's a two-year grant. And it, it really is just seed funding so that we can establish an outreach service to those who are homebound. Yeah. And you know, our our primary population is elderly people, but there may be people who have their knee replaced. Or hopefully, you haven't had to had that happen. Not but yet. you know, you're sitting at home recuperating for three months, you can't get to the library, and so we're delivering materials to you. So right. for whatever age group. Um, That's a great program. And, and once it's, again, it's, it's it, of course, the main population is, is, seen is older people. But it's like this whole notion of, dis of disabilities, you know, disabilities. Yes. It, it, it's, it used to be about a few people until everybody realized that it's about you when you're old. For sure. Now all of a sudden it's very real. <laughs> that's right. So, so we have an outreach great. coordinator, Rick Starzik. Yeah. He's part-time, yeah. but he has hit the ground running. We deliver materials. We have these incredible library couriers that are volunteers, yeah. all women, by the way, and they use their own cars and they, you know, we, we provide the materials. Yeah. They go and pick them up about a week or two later. We're, we're going to private homes, but primarily right now we're going to Whitney Place, which as you know, is in the community. Yeah. And there are quite a few clients that we have there and we're expanding that outreach. So for anyone at home, if you have anyone, either yourself or someone in your family that's looking for library materials to be delivered, you know, contact the library, ask for me, or Rick Starzik, and, and we'll be happy to you know provide that service. And That's Chris, great. It's not just books, right? There's it's not videos, just books. It's it? videos. It's DVDs. It's really essentially anything you can get at the library. We'll bring it to your that home. You'll bring it to the home. Yeah, it's called and, Library on the Go. And get, and just I'm curious, how much how much is that costing you a year? So we did get a grant of about uh, I think it was fourteen thousand yeah. dollars, and so that's a two year grant. So essentially seven thousand dollars a year, right. which is peanuts. And the reason why I mention that is I know that we, going back to the to the to the uh, day the daybreak program, one of the pieces of the daybreak program when it expanded to Northboro was a commitment by each of the and Marlboro was a commitment right. by each of the three communities to start figuring out how to make it permanent. 
But now the, the, the friends of the senior center have, have committed you know, that the, for, the, the, for the next year, they're gonna, they're gonna do it. Uh, the, the, the person who's, who's the chair of the group yeah. was here at, at early, in an earlier show just talking about that. That's wonderful. wonderful. But, but the main thing is, it's, these are not big, this isn't big money, right? right? The, for that program, I think it's, it's 10 or $20,000 a year, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. For what you're talking about, it's small, small. money. It is. Small money. And I know that one of the kind of the mantras at the senior center is, we gotta pay for it. It's not going to come out of the budget, <laughs> That's right? right? Yeah. But the friends has been, have been so great that they way. They do been. a lot of fundraising just to be trying to deal with, mm -hmm. it, it. once again, it's not big money and it's, it's local and it's really, really helping. Mm -hmm. So what else is going on at the library? Well, that, you know, our, let me just our say. friends who, who so are about Frank and Mary's age. I, I, I appreciate <laughs> the, you know, the, the question because we're celebrating a, a milestone this year. It's our 150th anniversary, Arthur, 1868. Now, this was even before you were That's born. That's so right? exciting. Okay. No, there but, may be some people watching. <laughs> 1868. We don't know. And so we um, are celebrating this whole year, 2018, a, a, a yeah. year-long series of celebrations culminating with a 150th anniversary gala on April 6th, 2019. Mm -hmm. So coming up uh, in April. And um, there's just so much happening. We, we were you know, celebrating over Apple Fest weekend. We had the library's book cart drill team out there. And yeah, even though it was 87 the library degrees, book, book cart, cart drill, drill team. team. So yeah, this is something, it's, it's, it's a trend in libraries and you haven't apparently uh, come across it, but oh, I've missed this. there are drill teams throughout the country that libraries sponsor. And you know, because we have book carts that we push in the library. And so we have a little um, a team of eight people and we uh, yeah. practice our drills and we go out and we decorate them and we just do little maneuvers, okay? It's, you know, it's, it's something. Oh. So this so must be in the, they must be in the, the parade. Yeah, this this is gonna, we're in the parade. This has got to be in the parade. We're in the parade, and, and I think I you'll it. probably see that. I, I think they have video of that. Yeah, and, yeah. and, you know, I'm kind of like um, wrong way Lindquist. I don't know which <laughs> way I'm going, but we have an amazing team, and Katrina Ireland is our children's librarian. She's our yeah. team captain. So that was one thing. Yeah. And then, um, you know, we're, we're actually doing a special uh, exhibit in November and December, so just coming up in a, in a couple months, yeah. celebrating the Gale Library. So the original library of the Northboro Library was the Gale Library. We had the Gale family, Cyrus Gale, they were benefactors. And we're doing a special exhibit uh, in, in November, December with historical information from the Historical Society as well as um, we've invited uh, local artists yeah. uh, to kind of do renderings and to celebrate the Gale Library and, and to kind of show off their, oh, their cool. original artwork. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that'll be, and there's a reception on November 7th, 6 o'clock, everyone will be welcome. So uh, these are just some of the things that are happening. And you know, it's a special celebration, and we're also doing a time capsule, by the way. So in 2068, Arthur, <laughs> when we open up the time capsule, you, you know, we'll have so things. So is the tape of this show yeah, going to be exactly. on the time capsule? Yeah, exactly. Well, maybe. So we'll have um, things, right. we'll have, you know, things that we celebrated during our year-long uh, yeah. anniversary, as yeah. well as photos, as well as like the newspaper. You know, um, we've had all kinds of suggestions, and we're going to have a time capsule, which we will you know, enclose for 50 years and reopen in 2068, so that'll and, be coming. And, and it is interesting to, to see this evolution of libraries totally though, into, yes. the, into this kind of space, and Absolutely. totally it's appropriate an appropriate space to have seniors gathering. It is. Absolutely. It's just yeah. a natural, because I know yes. Marlboro is now looking at, the, they're doing, the, they've done the design. That's correct. For the new oh, library, which is, which is they, you know, now they're just trying to figure out where the $25 yes. million dollars <laughs> Well, so they've actually the, gotten, yeah. um, you know, preliminary funding from the yeah. State Board of Library Commissioners, they will be getting, I think, more than $10 million in construction funds. Of course, they're going to have to provide some local right. matching funds right. as well. So now, so now tell me about, about it, it seems to me that I've, I've heard that you folks may be doing some fundraising yourself. Well, thank you. Again, you know, I didn't even ask you. I didn't you prompt didn't you. Even... But, but no. So as part of our, I guess, well, our anniversary celebration. That's right. <laughs> we are, we've engaged a fundraising firm yeah. uh, called Carlton & Company, Bill yeah. Carlton. Uh, and, and they're meeting right now. We are um, doing an internal study. It's a planning study, it's a feasibility study um, in order to set the stage and to determine you know, what is our, um, our feasibility in raising funds for the library. So we want to yeah. do a, a campaign. There will be a formal announcement at some point. Yeah. Right now we're just doing kind of laying the groundwork for that. Yeah. But probably around the time of the gala in April, we'll yeah. announce the fundraising campaign. And this is really to supplement town appropriation. So the town obviously supports the library. And we get some state aid, we get, you know, friends, uh, yeah. donations from our wonderful friends group. Yeah. But we also need additional funds in order to do things like restore our hours on Monday mornings and Thursday evenings. Those were cut about 10 years ago during the recession. Yeah. Still trying to restore the hours. We want to do some 
physical changes just within the library, yeah. repurposing, rearranging space because libraries are changing. Um, and you know, we want to do some, I, I guess, forward-looking things with technology. And so that's going to be part of the fundraising effort. We also want to establish an endowment fund at the Community Foundation of Greater right. Worcester. So th these are some of the things we're looking at. That's terrific. And, and, and over terrific. time, obviously yeah. it takes time, um, eventually we'll build up an endowment fund to supplement the town's appropriations. So right. That's, that's, it's a, that's, not, that's terrific. And it, and it really is, it's getting to the heart of w w the way that so many things are changing. That people, that, that money that used to be spent on a lot of hardware. Correct is now it's spent now. more and more on a lot of technology. It's the way the whole transport, exactly. you know, the way the transportation system is changing, you know, That's instead right. of expanding roads, That's we're correct. coordinating through Uber, you know, right. we're just, so, so to be right. having the, that, the library really kind of changing with the times. And it's so essential. Right. I mean, when you think about it, you know, the addition was built about 10 years ago, and now 10 years later, there's so many changes in the world in, with right. technology and in the library field. So we want to be prepared, you know, to serve customers. And people are getting older, and, and we yeah. want to provide services to the, those in the community who are older. So, I mean, that's all part of kind of this fundraising effort. That's really exciting. Yeah. That's really and exciting. And thank you for your support as well. Well, no, no so we're all, money follows good that's ideas. Right? right? <laughs> right? That's good. That's his mantra. If, no, if it's good, the money, if, the, if it's good, the money will always be there. Right? And I, and I think the folks here who have, many of whom have spent their lives here. True. And have gone as little kids to the Gale Library. Absolutely. You know, and have got grandchildren that are here. You know, yep. and you know, I always talk to my clients about this. I say, you know, mm -hmm. so often when you're, when you're figuring out your estate plan, you say, well, you know, I really want to, you know, I want to leave money to my kids. I want to leave money to my grandchildren. And I say, well, you know, but you know, what you also want to leave is a community. You want to leave a community. You want your grandchildren, yep. if they're living here, to be able to what? Go to the hospital, mm -hmm. go to the library. Mm -hmm. You want this to be a vibrant community. Great so, it, and, if, and if you haven't done that, then you're giving to all of these kids who are gonna go away. Right. Mm -hmm. Because it isn't gonna be a special place. So, so in the long run, that notion of you're really focused mm -hmm. on, on mm -hmm. developing an endowment, mm -hmm. developing a plan giving thing, because it really is an institution that is in, 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 the, in, the, in the hands of people like you, sure. who can really try to look into the future and see it. It's a wonderful thing. Well, great message. So, anyway, thanks, Emily. I didn't get to. So, if anybody saw that fly, I did. I was trying. Oh, he a couple was, of he's still buzzing around. We're still looking for the fly. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank and you, Chris, for coming Thank on. You, Carol Martha. DiRienzo, always Thank a pleasure. You just had so much energy to the. Room. She's such a wallflower. Isn't she? <laughs> She's not like you. Yeah. Right? She's so she's, introvert. She's so introvert. <laughs> I am. Thank you, Tammy Pazarecki. You this are is welcome. Fun. This is and fun. And we'll see you on the next uh, installment of Frank and Mary in North Grove. Thank you. <laughs>